This is not the end, Doctor. This is not the end. I will find you. I will kill you. And I will make sure you suffer whilst I do. Oh, fuck off, Rassilon. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick here. Welcome to the first Aimless Wanderings review. Now, if you want to check out what I think of the Aimless Wandering stories from Evil of the TARDIS to No Strings Attached, go to the Nicholas Payne Retro channel and check out my Aimless Wanderings vlogs, where I, I talk about every Aimless Wandering story from Evil of the TARDIS in 2013 to No Strings Attached in 2016. And for about... Uh, that was November 2016, it's about a year, November, December 2016, 14, 15, for about 16 months, that was it, for Aimless Wanderings, that was it, from Rush, uh, not from Rush, from Telford with Love was supposedly in uh, post-production or in production in the middle of 2017, but uh, that would have been the next episode in Further Apologies. And, but that never materialised, nothing materialised until March 2018, where it was announced the Pompous Redemption would be coming out. And in March 2018, we got the live, the, the live release, followed by an official release afterwards. So it says the 18th of March 2018, that's when they did the live version, and then it went out properly in the, on the 24th. So the Pompous Redemption, we finally got it. We finally got the story to tie up the Pompous Doctor's story arc starting in, uh, you could argue, either in Mortal Pomposity or at the very end of Death to the Davros. Death to the Davros. And that's the story we've been seeing throughout Darker Paths, War of the Doctors, and a bit in Greatest of Friends. Um, now, we're finally here. We're finally at the grand conclusion of the story arc of this Doctor, and it is fan-bloody-tastic. Oh my god, Aimless Wanderings came back for a bang for one, technically two, nights only. What, one night only for the live stream and then another night for the release. We have yet to have another Aimless Wanderings release, despite the next Dynamite Wave being announced due for 2018. Then again, they've had to push back releases for a while, such as Dynamite Wave 1 was twenty was going to be 2014, but it was pushed back to 2015, same with Water Doctors, and Fruit Pass was pushed back from 14 to 16, and of course the Sorry Doctor Wave 3, episodes 3 to 6, are currently in limbo, as well as all the other stories after No Strings Attached being delayed by at least a year or two, uh, besides uh, further apologies, which seem to be delayed indefinitely at the moment. A bit like Tortured on TV. So, Pompous Redemption, we ha we, uh, see Tim come to a hermit-style Pompous Doctor who's hiding away, trying not to cause any trouble, following the events of Water Doctors and Martin's Last Bark. Basically, Tim pretty much berates him for wasting his extra time that he got to, so desperately to... Uh, get. So Tim needs the Doctor to go on a mission for Gallifrey, uh, as Tim's president now, to find who's been rewriting store, the story, who's been doing these rewrites. So the Doctor, along with a new companion called Mute, who is silent, apart from a little bit later on where we, where she does have her voice, and it's Jenny Lippman voicing her in those scenes, uh, one, no, one scene. So we will hear mute, it's just going to take until near the end to discover it in the climax, more or less. So the Doctor and Mute try to find this narrator guy, however, they get sidetracked and go to Tudor, England, where they rescue some pugs and spend some time with King Henry VIII before having to escape King Henry VIII after upsetting him. 
Matthew Chambers voices King Henry VIII, and this, I mentioned him being great in his previous two roles in Batway Leads to Death. That's a joke if you want to rewatch that vlog for further reasonings. And also his role in No Strings Attached. Here he is absolutely fantastic as King Henry VIII. He is perfect for this role out of anyone besides the Doctors and some of the regular cast. Uh, Matthew Ch Certainly as guest character or guest cast, Matthew Chambers is the best. As Henry VIII, he's the best cast and the best performance. And eventually after leaving King Henry VIII, the Doctor and uh, Mute arrive on Outpost 1, which a Gallifreyan outpost, where they are studying a big giant uh, space uh, uh, space hole? What was it? The vortex opening? I don't remember, but one of the two people there is Corkings, voiced by Phoenix, Phoenix Smith, who is amazing in this role as well, and he pretty much explains the story of Califrey, at least Aimless Wandering's versions, and it's soon revealed that the narrator is in fact the Time Lord known as Rassilon. Oh my god, as soon as they said, it's Rassilon, I, like, I get it, I get it, because they keep referring to him as the narrator, and then once they say he's Rassilon, I got it, I got it. Also, Rassilon, the act, uh, John Hutch is voicing him, and he is trying, he definitely sounds like Timothy Dalton's Rassilon from the end of time, and it's from that where I got the reference as him being the narrator until they revealed it's Rassilon. Oh my god, that was an amazing revelation. <laughs> oh, Rassilon is never credited as Rassilon in the end of time. He's the narrator slash Lord President. Narrator in episode one, in part one, Lord President in part two, but the Doctor calls him Rassilon in part two. So, Timothy Dalton is playing Rassilon, and I can see this is definitely a performance uh, based on the Timothy Dalton performance be even better if it was Timothy Dalton. <laughs> and yeah, I got I got the reference. That was such a that was amazing. Also a nice little, little it's never Omega joke is thrown in there. It's never Omega. <laughs> yeah, it's never Omega for those who don't know is a stop motion uh, comedy by the Five Who fans who also make these vlogs and they've done this stop comedy uh, stop motion comedy series called it's N it's never omega so that's worth checking out phoenix smith voices the titular omega and it's in that where the ever popular drashig voiced by billy tracy makes his first appearance um drashig was actually supposed to be in one of these at some point down the line but i think that's that one's been cancelled or delayed indefinitely um, anyway, moving on to it, Rassilon then decides to spread havoc. So the Doctor, Mute, and the Master, who's been sent to help him, have are in the death zone, and they have to get to Rassilon. The Doctor fights a conscience. He's pretty much at this point because he know he's guilty. He's been guilty about what he's done. He's uh, he's actually waiting or willing to be his next self, Dynamite because he was scared of becoming him, but after realising what an idiot he's been all this time, he decides to... he wants to become his next self, so he become, so he is freed of this guilt. And he is pretty much on a suicidal mission in the last... Uh, around this point. But just before... just after that, he confronts Rassilon and stops him with the help of Mute. That sounded... Like that's the short version of it. It's a bit long. It takes a bit more time than that. Don't worry. The master also turns up at the end and uh, end of that scene and misses everything. <laughs> the pompous doctor then attempts a, a suicide, but then he fails, and then he is put on trial for his previous stories, as it previous misses uh, what's happened. However, with the uh, everyone taking into consideration him saving the day, and then other people coming to uh, defend his actions. So Eric Cleeg pretty much clear shows that everyone on Debitron was 
uh, pretty much tells everyone what the audience knew about Debatron and also reveals to the Doctor to kind of calm the guilt a little bit of uh, saying that there were no children on Debatron, which was something the Doctor was worried about. And then uh, Tim, the ma uh, not the master, the scientist, Davros, and... Did anyone, who else was it? Besides the doc, uh, other doctor. Uh, yeah, that's about it. It's uh, yeah. I think it's just Eric with Derek helping Tim, the scientist Davros, and then the dynamite doctor coming to the doctor's defense. And also, in Dynamite's case, he pretty much tells them, the judge what that whatever happens will affect him and any other future incarnations, such as Quincy, for example. And so the judge eventually decides to let the pompous doctor off on the condition he has uh, someone watching him during these adventures, which is the passenger at the end of the story. The master kidnaps Martin to the pug that the doctor and Newt saved. But one of the pucks, and takes them, takes him off back in time to become the first Martin, the original, uh, in a really nice uh, uh, full circle style of events where things are coming full circle. The master is sting a pug that goes back in time to become Martin. This Martin becomes Pompous's companion until Martin's last bark. Then it's because of it's a one. Of, that's one of the turning points of Pompous going rogue. That takes us to this, and then while the Doctor sees him at the after that, we see him get better, and then we come to here where he's redeemed and he saves the pugs because of that uh, during this adventure. That then it becomes full circle. It's time travel. It's complicated, and so the Doctor and Mute go travelling in the TARDIS with the passenger, and everything is well. And that's the Pompous Redemption. It is a fan bloody tastic audio. It is also the longest one at approximately one hour and forty two minutes and Yeah, exactly. Although there is a few seconds of uh silence at the very end. Whether it's the longest story full stop is yet is to be debatable because War of the Doctors is six parts of about fifteen to twenty fifteen to thirty five minutes. But definitely this one is the longest individual episode. It is not split into two or three or four parts. Um, again, Jim could, might even be longer in its four-part version. That being said, I think it did, it did need to, to be a full-length story to show the entire, uh, exactly exa everything that's happening. And it does it in an amazing way, and it's uh, executed amazingly. A Pompous Redemption could be the best made audio so far in the Aimless Wanderings. I mean, the the last couple have. I mean, they've all amazingly made, and the last couple have had a lot of great stuff. Definitely uh, since uh, the end of Darker Paths, we've had a lot of great executed audios, and I don't think we've ever we haven't had a we haven't had a bad one, a uh, bad executed audio. I wouldn't say bad story, the week, my least favourite, is only a 5 out of 10. And I think the rest are 7 to 10 out of 10s. I think, yeah. And, yeah, this is a fantastic story. Cast, outstanding. Especially the regulars and Mashy Chambers. And John Hutch also does an amazing job as the narrator slash Rassilon. And... Execution, as I said, it's amazing. Music is amazing. Sound design, amazing. So that's basically execution role. Well. Story, outstanding. And <clears throat> yeah, it's it's just the perfect it's the perfect end to this story arc. Pompous will be getting a new story arc from this point onwards, pro probably with some uh, with reflection to this one, but. And it's also an amazing return for Aimless Wanderings, but also a current, amazing, uh, current final story. So, but it's both an outstanding return and an outstanding current conclusion. 
a current conclusion as there isn't any out yet. At time of recording, at least. In release, there could be an announcement of more stories to come. They will announce them first. They won't release them in secret. But unless there is an announcement or an actual release between time of recording, which is Halloween, just like the day of No Strings Attached, and release of this story in 2018, then there, then I... Uh, and that this is the current last one, but if there's any more, they will be reviewed, and they, and that will be the uh, be the same for all future ones when they do come out. So the next story should be the Doctor Returns, which is Dynamite Wave Two, Episode One. But along with the rest, that wave was supposed to be this year, but whether unless they're going to release one of those episodes before the end of the year, then it might be another delayed it will is it yeah it will be a delayed series so yeah i know it takes time to work on these ones in which case uh, it's probably best not saying when just say coming soon for them i can see why they now put sorry way free on hold indefinitely despite from tale with love being in at least in post production a little in post-production but anyway doesn't no worries we'll we'll get to them when they come out brand new reviews will be coming out as soon as well shortly after the new episodes have been released i decided to review this one as because i thought it's a 2018 story and it's the last one i thought i'd do a proper review on the main channel instead of a normal on one of the vlogs on the retro channel and we just wrap up the series and basically if if I did the Time Agent vlogs on the Retro channel, well, actually, I think the two reviews would have gone on there as well. But this is kind of like a Madness 2 Ultimate Conflict review as well, except it's for one of the actual episodes of the thing I'm, I was doing vlogs for. <laughs> so those two were reviews that were alongside the Time Agent, uh, Time Agent vlogs, who which will also get reviews when new Time Agent comes out. That is due next year sometime. Not sure when I'm putting... I'm ex well, it's either going to be March or July. I don't know why I think March. It just feels like it could be March, but it might. I think most likely July for Time Agent Series 4. And that's only going to be three episodes instead of the usual six, sadly. But, oh well. See how it goes. It might be longer. Um, so the other stories, they might even have... They might save for Series 5, which could have more episodes. Anyway, so, The Pompous Redemption, outstanding! I love this story, they put their all into this one, even if they, even without the break, even if they had finished further apologies, and got to this one, 2017, 2018, uh, 2019, depending on how long the gaps between each episode is, it would have been an amazing episode to uh, release. It's one of the amazing ones. We've had amazing ones like The Dark at the Start, we've had uh, War of the Doctors, and even some of the episodes hidden in waves, such as Blobatron and some, some in the Darker Paths. We've had so many great notable episodes, so the fact that, so even if it was, even if Wave 3 of Sorry was finished and we were just having reg just some gaps between them, but not, not 16 months, and no indefinite release stories, and Dynamite Wave 2 was, uh, would definitely be coming out. Um, yeah, it still wouldn't change the fact this is still an amazing story. So overall, I'm going to give the Pompous Redemption a whopping big 10 out of 10. <laughs> This is easily one of the best Aimless Wandering stories so far, and it is definitely the best episode since uh, War of the Doctors Part 6. Possibly even better than that. Possibly. And I did like Blobatron a lot. I also love Death to the Dalek. Not Death to the Daleks, Death to the Davros. But this one possibly could be the only contender that beats War of the Doctors Part 6, which up to this point, uh, this episode, prior to this one, was probably my favourite overall. So, yeah, fantastic current ending of the series. The next Aimless Wanderings review 
when it comes out will be Dynamite, not Dynamite the Doctor, that's already been done, that's a vlog on the Retro channel, will be The Doctor Returns, and we'll see about what happens with Sorry Wave 3, uh, post uh, No Strings Attached. Uh, when those do come out, if they do, uh, those will be reviews as opposed, whilst well, the first two will remain vlogs. But I would recommend checking out the other vlogs. Also, I will be doing uh, rankings of my favourite episodes from each Doctor and my top 10, 12, or maybe even 15 Aimless Wanderings audios overall. So, sorry, Pompous, and I think maybe Dynamite uh, top... Actually, I think just sorry and, Di uh, sorry and Pompous will be top 5 best episodes. Best to worst for Fruit Pastel and Dynamite. These are just uh, ones of feature... These are the like, sorry, Wave 3. It's not ones that they necessarily appear in, it's just ones that are their stories, like the Pompous Redemption is a Pompous Doctor story, Snow Strings Attached is a Sorry Doctor story, in which case we will have an extremely tiny ranking for the Quintessential Doctor, because she's only had one at this moment, so she might not even get a ranking, it might just be a passing mention uh, in one of the other ones. Same for the original, who doesn't even appear, apart from some moans and groans and a narration by John Granson in Convolution of the Doctor Part 2, but definitely for Fruit Pastel Dynamites, they're best to were they're my least favourite to favourite of their stories, that of their own stories, and then Sorry and Pompous hits the top five of their stories, and Quincy will make a passing remark of uh, about her story being number one because it's the only one of hers out at the moment. Uh, like I said, not necessarily ones that appear in, and also do a best to worst, uh, worst uh, least favourite to favourite, multiple Doctor ones, uh, episodes, individual ones, not stories, and then the top 15 or t or 12 or 10 episodes. It might even be a top 20 if, I can't, if I'm struggling to get a, be a definitive list. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Please check out the other vlogs and stay tuned for more Aimless Wanderings rankings in the not too distant future on the Retro channel along with the vlogs and any other future Aimless Wanderings reviews and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>
Okay. No. Oh, fuck off, Rassilon! Let's do it with the zip up. <coughs> oh, fuck off, Rassilon! One more take just to be on the safe side. I think the second take was the best. 